next thing would be to have a go at um, basically moving the car and have a go at the pedals. Kind like of fun bit. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to sort of I'm going to guide you through this, and I want you to basically just follow my voice. Okay. Um, and I'll let you know exactly what to do to do the pedals. So essentially, if I don't mention something, then it doesn't need to be done okay. done yet. I'll let you know exactly when and yeah. where to do everything. And we're basically just going to have an issue have a go just moving forwards very slowly and doing um, a bit of what you call clutch control okay. just so you can see how the clutch works when you're at slow speeds okay so if you can press the clutch fully down and keep it down and then move the gear stick into gear one which is towards me and up that's great i'm also going to just have my foot over the clutch here just um to sort of reassure and just for safety in this, this sort of this first lesson just to be sure okay and now what you should do is if you have your do that thing of having your heel below the brake pedal and then sort of pivot your foot towards the gas and what you see if you can do now is just press and hold the gas you can hear a gentle sort of lively hum yeah and just press and hold yeah that sounds good so not that we ideally want to be looking at the dial, but on the dial, you'd that'd normally be somewhere around the two. Okay. But ideally, you wouldn't want to be looking at the dial because you'd normally want to be keeping your eyes on the road. On the road. Yeah. You'd more want to go with sort of sort of noise okay. and hearing and sort of feel. Okay. So see if you can just press and hold. Just have a go at that. That'd be fine somewhere around there. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it's slightly over, slightly under, as long as it's roughly around yeah. around two, it's not not an exact science thing really too much. So that's brilliant there. So you've got nice control of your feet. Um and what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna take the handbrake off for you because I want you to so you can just fully focus on your pedals. I'm also just gonna be keeping a bit of an eye on what's going on around us. So my mirror my mirror here, and you might see me checking around a bit as well, just okay. so you can fully focus on the pedals. Now what you should do is just very, very slowly ease off the clutch. When you feel it start to move, hold your foot still. Okay. I'm waiting your hand should be at this point. That's <laughs> good. Feet still there. Keep that foot still. I don't know if you might have noticed how the engine noise changed. Yeah. That's a clue you've got to the body. If you now go clutch fully down, that will disconnect the engine and the coal will start to lose momentum. Okay. And now I'm going to try that again. If you now very gently ease the clutch up, when you feel it start to move more, and you maybe hear the engine noise go quieter, hold your foot still. So, that there. so yeah. keep your foot still. Could you sort of feel it there? Yeah. So that's the biting point. And then go clutch fully down. That will disconnect it. Yep. And the car will like start to lose a bit of momentum. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let it lose a bit more momentum this time. Of course, this would only lose momentum if it's fairly flat. It wouldn't work if you're going down a hill, for example. Right. <laughs> so we're going to let it sort of lose quite a lot of his momentum. Mm -hmm. And now we can have another go at doing that. So you've got your gas set, which is good. Yep. And now we're going to gently ease the clutch up, and when you feel that biting point, remember to keep your foot still. Okay. That's good, so keeping that foot still there, and having out going, pressing the clutch back down, that will disconnect it, and you might feel how it then starts to lose a bit of momentum. Right. And now we're going to keep that clutch down, and then see if you can now um, cover your brake, just to sort of pivot your foot over it. And then that clutch is fully down, isn't it good? Yeah. And then just gently brake, come to a stop. Keep your feet Ooh. still. Keeping those feet still. And then if you pop the handbrake on, keep your feet still. And then go into neutral. And then give it a good, a little wiggle good to check it's in neutral. And now the car's secure, so the doing handbrake is neutral, is what we call securing the car. Okay. You can now ease off your pedals. So the car won't move anywhere. Right. Um, how was that though for the first time of moving, moving it, a car? It was definitely not what I expected. Every, ah. Everything is a bit more sensitive than you mm. originally think. It's, it, it, 
it won't look sensitive when people do it because they're so used to it. Yeah. But it's um yeah they are quite sensitive. The pedals are. It's definitely a fine art to driving. <laughs> mm. So that's why I was sort of meaning to. And on the way here, I said about um a lot of early stages about coordination. Yeah. So that's what's going to mean things like that because they are quite sensitive the pedals and things like that. Yeah. Um. Because I think were you sort of surprised a bit by the brake, were you? You know, when, when brake and you went, oh. Yeah, because I pressed it just a little bit and then it just came to a sudden stop. Mm. It almost jumped forward. Do you think it would stop that sort of suddenly if you're going at, let's say, 30 miles per hour? Uh, I doubt it, yeah. Mm. So it's basically only because we're at like five miles an hour, okay. the car's going to be quite, um, I don't know if keen's the right word, but it'd be, it'd be basically quite, it will stop quite readily. Okay. But like 30 miles an hour, it's not going to be sensitive. On the flip side, if you're on then even the other side, if you're on the other side of this fence on the dual carriageway doing 70, yeah. the brake won't be sensitive at all. Okay. It's a really weird thing. When you're learning to drive, you'll be initially doing slow speed stuff, but that's the thing where actually it needs more control. Yeah. If you're on fast speed, you could press the brake fairly hard and it wouldn't just suddenly stop. Okay. Even it's because it's higher speed and it's not sensitive. Um, and um, when of course you, you come to a stop, do you remember I said to you to keep your clutch down and keep your brake down, like basically keep your feet still, yeah. and then I said about doing the handbrake, keep your feet still, going into neutral, okay. and then you can relax your feet. Um, any ideas what would happen if you, came off the, if you came to a stop and you came off the foot brake and your handbrake wasn't on yet? Uh, the car would start to roll. Yeah, subject to how the hill was. Yeah. Cool. And then thinking about what you just learned with how the clutch works, any ideas what happened if you're in gear and you brought your foot off the clutch? It would basically jump forward. Yeah, try to move. Yeah. Depends how much you came off the clutch. If you came off the clutch like that, yeah. it would jump forwards and okay. probably stall. If you came off it slowly, it would try to move. And then hopefully the idea being, you would basically, can I show you something? Can, I have, can you have your foot just sort of away from under the pedal, your left foot? Cool. Okay. So that when I press this one down, it'll move that one. Don't want to crush your foot. Because <laughs> um, basically a good tip can be, once you've come to a stop and you'll be like this, you'll be in gear, your yeah. handbrake will be off. Always come off the pedal slowly. Because if, let's say, you start to come off the brake and it starts to roll, I don't think it will, you could then go oh, back on the brake and think that needs to be on. Okay. Or equally, if you come off the clutch slowly and it did that, you can go, oh, clutch down. Oh, I'm still in gear. <laughs> okay. So basically, it can save you from stalling. Where if I'm not going to do it, but if I just kind of jumped off the clutch, assuming I was in neutral, I'd probably stall quite a lot. Okay. So basically, always just, almost, I suppose, almost assume you're always in gear and always just ease off the pedal slowly just to make sure that you're definitely, handbrake's on, it's definitely in neutral. Okay. Um, but this is why some people get OCD of the gear stick because they, they, if they leave it in gear by mistake and they jump off the clutch, they're stall. Yeah. So they go to see if really checking it's in neutral so they don't stall because okay. people don't fall slight stalling. Um, so, any questions on that at the moment? Uh, no, not at the moment, no. Cool. So, because your, um, your pedal control is actually really quite nice there, it was. Nice sort of, nice sort of um, movement of your pedals and that sort of thing. What I think we're getting to do now is see if you, we can get you to do the um, the handbrake and also get you, to, get you to also be doing some observations um, when before moving off. Right, okay. Um, so, again, if you follow my voice, and I'm going to guide you through it. Okay. So, if you can go clutch fully down for me and keep it down into gear one, so that's pressure towards me and up. That's great. And again, I'm just going to have my foot just near the clutch just for, just to be sure. And now you're going to just have your, um, you're going to set your gas now. So you can just hear, a, you're going to hear a lively hum. Not too much. That's great, around there it's perfect. Right. Um, so now we're going to very gently ease the clutch up to find this bike. Now we're not looking for the car to move this time because the handbrake's on. Okay. We're just looking for the car to be prepared to move. Prepared to move. So when it's, when, it's, when it's at the bite, actually, sorry, you can keep the clutch down for the moment. When it's at the bite, can you remind me how we'd know, how you noticed a moment ago, the sort of what changed? So can you repeat that, please? Um, so you know when you get to the biting point? Yeah. Um, 
how can we tell when we've got to that biting point? You might have noticed I sort of mentioned the little clue a moment ago. Yeah, the car will kind of like pull, want to pull forward. It'll pull a little bit, yeah, yeah, cool. We don't want to pull too much because the handbrake's on, right. so it'll pull a little bit. Uh, and the, also the noise. Yeah, the engine noise drops. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Okay. That's basically these two clutch plates meeting. The engine yeah. want the gas one spinning, yeah. and as they meet, friction slows it down. Okay. So that's why the noise gets quieter. Right, okay. So, so you've got your gas set, which is great. So now we're going to gently ease the clutch up. And when you hear the engine noise change or the car start to pull a little bit, keep that foot still. There, so keep that foot still there. So now, um, what you can do, this is now, now if you have your left hand on the handbrake, but don't release it yet. Mm -hmm. This is you now essentially prepared to move. And now we're going to observe to see if it's safe. So, in there and then in on there. Then we've also got, ah, you know, but do you know what that area's called that you just looked in there? Your blind spot. Yeah. So just having another look over that blind spot to make sure it's all safe. Okay. And you're happy in your mirrors are looking safe to go. Yep. So keeping your feet still and then releasing the handbrake. That's it. And if it doesn't move, then just bring the clutch up a tiny bit. And when it starts to move a bit more, keep that foot still. That's it, maybe up a tiny bit more in the clutch. Okay. And then feet still there. And then where could your other hand go now? That's it, cool. That's good, keeping those feet still. That's good, nice steering away from the bushes is good. And now you've got to this speed, you can now fully release your clutch, just gently ease it up all the way up to the top. Okay. So the clutch, that holding the clutch of bite is just for that initial move off um, to control it so it moves off smoothly. And then the next I'm going to show you now um, is basically I want you to just do no gas me. Come off the gas and do none of it. Because okay. a lot of time at this point, people would expect the car to come to a stop. But it keeps moving. So we're going to keep that clutch up. Okay. And just... Because would you expect the car to be stopping here? or Because a lot of people would when you do no gas. They think the car is just going to stop. But it'll just keep would. crawling along. Yeah. So this is just basically show you that because sometimes people hold on to the gas for too long because they think if you don't do the gas the car is just going to stop suddenly, but it won't. Just continue it will just continue. It. Unless you get to a very steep hill, then right. it will kind of not have enough momentum. Right. So we're now going to um, to look to pull up on the left here. Okay. So I'm going to guide you through this. So at the moment, do you think there's anyone to signal to at the moment? Anyone would benefit from a signal? I would imagine possibly that pedestrian Is there. Is he walking towards us or away from us? Oh, away from so us. So would he see us? Uh, no, not So apparently. what do you think? Would he benefit, do you think? Uh, he would. He might do, because he could turn around. You could never do, know. but probably not too probably, likely. Yeah, unlikely. So at the moment, there's not a need to signal. Okay. Um, so you're just going to press your clutch fully down and keep it down. Okay. That's it. And what you could then, then we're just going to sort of, no signal needed, and we're going to gently steer towards the curb, getting a little bit closer to the curb. That's it. And then steering away now a bit. That's good. And then just gently braking to come to a stop. Good. And keep your feet still. And handbrake on. Keep your feet still. And into neutral. That's it. And then gently ease off the pedals. So that way, if you were in gear by mistake, you would feel it and then jump, go back on the pedals to stop it jumping forwards. Um, so, how was that though? <laughs> That one was definitely more, it felt better, smoother. Yeah. I, did, I didn't brake as hard on the uh, parking up here. Yeah, that's a very, very fair point, isn't it? Yeah, so you sort of learn from the last one how sensitive you have to be at that brake. Yeah. But like I say, when you're at higher speeds, it is easier. Okay. It's just at these very low speeds, because it's so slow, it'll want to stop very, very efficiently, very quickly. Right. So you have to be very careful with the um, amount that you press the brake. Yeah. Um, it's very noisy, is anything of this road. <laughs> You've got the dual carriageway right there. Um, but yeah, now in terms of like say signals, the highway code says when you're moving off and stopping at the side of the road, the highway code says to signal if necessary. If necessary. Okay. So it's not actually a compulsory thing. Right. Um, and they wouldn't mark it down in the test if you didn't signal, as long as there was no need to signal. Okay. Um, but is there any harm in signaling there's no one around? Not really. Better safe than sorry. But, um, 
but yeah, technically the highway code says signal if necessary. The idea being it's supposed to encourage someone to be observant okay. before they pull away or before they pull over. Because okay. they're making a decision and thinking, is anyone wants a signal to? No. Okay. Rather than just a robotic routine of mirrors, signal, and they're not really right. paying attention to what's happening around them. That's the, that's the logic of why they say signal only when necessary, but um, yeah. Okay. So we're coming to um, the end of the road soon because up there where the footbridge starts, yeah. it basically the sort of the road starts to end there. Okay. Um, so we're going to get to that bit in a moment, and then we're going to think about turning the vehicle around. Okay. Um, but we're going to get to that bit first. So what we're going to do? We're going to pull forward, and then we're going to stop. Just I don't know if you can see there's a footpath that leads up to the footbridge. Yeah. Just after the bushes end. Yeah. We're going to move forwards and then come to a stop, just sort of, just roughly before that footpath. Okay. Um, and then you'll sort of see what we're going to use to turn the car around. Right, okay. So, given how you've done so far, I get the feeling that you might kind of, might be okay to have a go to see if you can move the car off here with oh. me staying a bit quieter. Right. I'm not going to stay completely quiet, I'm not going to just like leave you and abandon you. Okay. I'm going to just come jump out the car and think like that. <laughs> um, how would you feel about it if I stayed a bit quieter, but just stepped in if I looked like you're unsure? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm more than happy because it's something to learn from. So. Yeah. What you could do if you if you feel happy to, okay. is you could talk out aloud what you're about to do. So you could say to me, "I'm going to press the clutch down," and I could then say, "Yep, that's it." Okay. Or if you said to me, "Like I'm going to go into gear five, um, maybe try gear one." <laughs> so, so you could sort of do that so then I know what you're about to do right. and then I could then reassure you say yep that's perfect or say maybe do this okay. this first right do you want to have a go at doing that see what you can remember for pulling away from here okay so first things first I'm going to check my mirrors I just want to make sure they're surrounding safe for me to start acting mm -hmm. I'm going to put my foot down on the clutch yeah good uh, give it a bit of gas Uh, put it into gear one. Yep. Then I'm gonna inspect my mirrors again before pulling away. At the moment, okay. if you checked your mirrors now and you saw it's safe to go, right? Would you be ready to go? No, because I'm not on the biting point. Mm. Okay. So this is what some people use a little routine called prepare, observe, move. Okay. The prepare is like you were saying of doing the gas and the gear and then the biting point right. and having your hands on the handbrake okay. so you're basically prepared to move so once you've then seen it safe you can efficiently move at that point okay if that makes sense okay so so you've done your gas and then what's the next step to prepare the car so you're you said it, uh, so i need to go to the biting point good Good, and that's a nice way of keeping your foot still. Okay. And then you could have your hands on the handbrake here, so that's just also so you're a bit more prepared. It also means then you're more likely to remember to take it off. Okay. So now, is it safe to go? There is a car, so I would ah. imagine I'd need to signal. Yeah, it depends how you feel. You can wait for them to go if you want to, but it would potentially be safe to go because they're on the other side of the road. Yep. When I locked up on first lessons, we'd rather wait for someone to go completely so there's yep, no, one, no one around whatsoever. Yep. But ultimately, it would be perfectly safe to go there. Okay. So what I do, it's not going to affect... Oh, there's another car coming. I guess we best take my opportunity. Um, if you have your hands on the handbrake, yep. is... We may do all... I don't think it's going to be many of them. I think that's... Because I'm really surprised there's even two of them, to be yep. fair. Yeah, so I think that's it. So is it look, how's it looking now? Is it looking safe to go? Yeah. yeah Anywhere else you could check apart from your mirrors? Oh, my blind Good, spots. Good, yeah. That's it. Okay. And so you could then release that handbrake. Mm. So clutch down a little bit. And then fully down the handbrake. I'm just going to fully release the handbrake if you didn't quite go fully down. Okay. That's it. That's good. And now you got to this speed. Now that clutch can be fully released. Now you've moved forwards a bit. That's good. 
Yeah, so like this to remind you, we're going to be looking to stop on the left just before the, the footpath roughly. We won't steer in at all because these bushes are overgrown, so we don't want to steer in and then scratch the car against the bushes. Mm -hmm. So um, where could you move your right foot to now? You could then cover good, and your left foot could cover clutch good. And then anyone to signal to, do you think? Uh, nobody. No? Cool, so you'll go clutch fully down first. That's it, and then just gently, gently brake to come to a stop. That's it, and then keeping your feet still, and then now to secure the car for a moment. So yeah, handbrake first, that's it. then neutral. Let me just double check this in place. Yep. And they also give the gear a little wiggle to make sure you're in neutral. Okay. That's it. And, and then, then off. If the car starts to move, jump back off. That's it, basically, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Successful stop. <laughs> so it is, um, they're definitely looking like getting more used to the brakes. Of how they're sort of, they're, yeah. like, they are quite sensitive, aren't they? They're yeah. nice, smooth, smooth braking, and that is nice. Yeah. I cool. did jolt at the little end bit there, but... Um, what do you mean, just before stopping yeah. sort of thing? A little tip with that, if you, if you, if you sometimes find it jolts when you stop, yeah. so you initially press the brake to slow, but literally like a second before the car fully stops, ease off the braking pressure slightly. Okay. Not fully, because it'll keep moving, but slightly. So you're essentially be doing using the brakes to slow, and just before it stops, then ease off it a bit. Okay. It's probably not too possible here because it's because you're because you're under brake brake so much. If you ease off it a bit, you'll probably off it fully. Okay. But it works quite well. You're in at faster speeds. You basically use the brakes to slow, just before you stop, ease off it a bit. Okay. And that will basically make a smooth, a smooth stop. Just taking that braking pressure off just at the last second a little bit, but not fully. Just a little bit off the pressure. Okay. Um. Um. Would I be correct in saying that when you moved off there? It kind of felt like it moved a bit faster than you wanted it to. Uh, yeah, it did. So, thinking about what you've sort of learnt from the clutch so far, any thoughts on what might have caused that? I reckon I was too high on the clutch, so the yeah. plates would have been closer together. So it's just connecting a little bit too yeah. much power? Yeah. So what was the solution that I advised you to do to resolve that? Just push down on the clutch a little bit. Yeah, so it's your base, you just taking the way that too high so therefore go down a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, so that's basically what you do that ever, that ever happens there, just to just to keep control of it. Right. So basically clutch down to slow down, clutch up to speed up. Okay. It's a kind of a suppose a way to think about it. And that's gonna be particularly important here because we're gonna basically use this parking bay here okay. um, to turn around. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a free in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions, common driving test faults, driving test general tips, and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally, it has tips for after you've passed your test, including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video. Um, now, there's two ways that people think about doing this. The first way would be thinking, would be thinking about, I'm just going to get whiteboard out. The first way we think about would be driving forwards into there and backing out. Okay. And the second way would be to drive past it and reverse in. Um, could you pass your theory test? Have you read about what the highway code says about if you should reverse into a space or reverse out of a space or I have not actually okay so it's more advisable to reverse into an opening okay rather than reversing out because if you imagine this was a main road and you drove forwards in yeah and now you're then reversing out onto the main road. You would have no visibility. Oh, you would. You'd have, you'd have less visibility, you yeah. mean, when you're back out. Yeah. Um, so you'd basically be reversing onto a main road when you wouldn't be able to see very well. Okay. So that could lead to could have dangers and that sort of thing. Okay. So that's why they say the safer thing is to reverse into an opening okay. and drive forwards out onto the, the, for example, main road. So the idea being. We're gonna do so rather than doing that and that, which at that point then we can't really see what's coming. 
we're going to pull forwards and pull up on the opposite side of the road because the parking bay is on the opposite side of the road. Okay. And then stop somewhere like that and then basically back into the opening. All right. So okay. we can then turn around. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you lots of help with that though because this is basically the main thing here is going to be practicing is practicing your clutch control to practice keeping the car very slowly when we're manoeuvring here because obviously you've got limited space and and that sort of thing so don't want to be going too fast towards the bushes and that sort of thing yeah okay um but like so i'm going to give you lots of help with that and i'm also going to have my feet kind of these pedals ready to sort of help you if needed okay and um, but i haven't asked that so far i've just had my feet near them but you've done all the pedal control so if i do ever need to use these i will let you know if i'm physically using them okay. i've basically just been having my foot near where your feet are ready to to help if needed okay so um if you get the car prepared to move so see if you can talk me through it to remind yourself what to do so what i'm going to do i'm going to put my foot down on the clutch yep give it a bit of gas put it into gear yeah good i'm just going to my foot sort of near this just to be sure and then come slightly off oh, let me just get it up yeah come slightly off the clutch get it to the biting point listening for that lower hum which is there that's it and then hand and hand then back. with the clutch can you just go clutch down a tiny bit okay because remember how before it moved forward a little bit too much yep. if you have it there it won't do that just okay. having that down that teeniest bit more we had you've got it now is much better okay um and we're going to move forward here we're going to practice trying to make the car move very really slowly okay so we've got a bit of experience of doing it when we back up in a moment okay um so is it looking safe to go at the moment currently yes yeah and i think in the blind spot <laughs> nothing in the blind spot cool it's tricky here because it's just bushes yeah. but it's just building that that habit really right. it'd be good if there's something there to get you really thinking about it but just bushes at the moment because it's still building habits yeah okay. so um if you now release the handbrake and keep that clutch still for the moment that's it and just go clutch up a tiny bit until it moves a tiny bit keep your clutch still there see how it's going really slow yeah this is what we're going to practice so and if you go clutch down a tiny bit that's it and then go clutch up a tiny bit so someone said to me before, it's almost like you're massaging the clutch to keep it slow. So clutch down a tiny bit. Okay. So this is how you get the car going really slow, clutch mm -hmm. down, it's really sensitive. And check in your mirrors, is it safe to move across the other side of the road? Uh, currently, yes. Yes, we're going to slowly move across the other side of the road to stop after the parking bay. After, okay. So just steering over a little bit more. That's it, and you can also go clutch down a little bit, just, that's it. And then clutch down a little bit just to keep it really slow. That's good. So I'm just steering this way a bit more. Clutch down a little bit. Just steering this way a bit more. That's it. And then clutch fully down. And then so clutch fully down and then gently brake to come to a stop. And then keeping your feet still and just secure the car for a moment. So it's kind of good. And then perfect. And a little wiggle to make sure it's in neutral and then you can just relax off the pedals for two seconds. So that's how you'd keep the car at a very slow speed, okay. like that. Yeah. So very sensitive, small movements of that, that clutch. Pushing that clutch. Up and down. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that's what you'd do if you're like doing parking, you'd okay. be doing that sort of control. If you're in a traffic queue, right. so you might imagine if you're in traffic queues for a long time, your foot will start to hurt. Yeah, could imagine um, <laughs> So that's why sometimes if you're in like a very busy city, people might choose to buy an automatic car. Yeah. You don't have to do all that if you're just in stop start traffic constantly. But around Crawley, it's actually pretty decent. Crawley's generally, it flows fairly well for around Crawley. Yeah, yeah. It's not too bad traffic flow. Yeah. Um, so now what we're gonna basically gonna do is look to back up into this parking bay to turn round. Okay. Essentially, our aim is to make the car facing that way. Right, okay. And then when we do this, I'm not expecting you to be hugging the curb or anything. Okay. I'd probably almost advise you just to sort of be aiming almost like for the middle, so there's lots of space to play with. Okay. Um, the first thing you need to decide is basically when to start steering. So at the moment, what do you think? If we steered now, do you think it would be okay or be too close to that grass? I reckon we'd be too close to that grass. At the yeah, I'd probably agree with you. Curb. 
Mm. Yeah. So we're going to go back in a straight line a little bit first. Okay. Um, to make sure when we steer in, we're going to be okay. We're not going to stop touch the grass or anything. Okay. So if you go clutch fully down for me, reverse gear just to show you. There's a button on the bottom, okay. so you can pull that up, push the gear stick towards you, and down. Okay. And to confirm it's in reverse gear, that button should stay kind of locked in. Okay. Where if it's in another gear, that button will be loose. Right. You'll see when you feel it yourself. So if you pull that button up. That's it, and towards you and down. That's it, and that button should be kind of locked in now. Okay. If you go now back into neutral and like go into another gear, it doesn't matter which one, it's can you feel the difference? Yeah. So if you now go back into that reverse gear, so that's just a way you can check by filling that button to make sure you're definitely in reverse gear. For example, if there's something very close in front of you yeah. and you want it to reverse, you want to be quite confident you're in reverse gear, you're not going to shoot forwards when you're expecting to go backwards, for example. Okay. So we're just going to initially go back in a straight line, like I say, until we kind of um, are going to be safe to turn. Now the road here is slightly on a slope, okay. so it might roll back a bit, but we're going to use that because we want to to go back basically. Okay. Um, so what you should do, keep your clutch down and just apply the foot brake fully. Because this is basically how we'd, we'd move if the, if the car's going to be rolling, okay. like rolling backwards if it's going down a hill. Right. You can now release the handbrake because the foot brake's on. Just make sure it's fully pressed. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay. And then at the moment, is it looking safe safe to go, safe to start moving backwards, do you think? It is at the moment, yeah. yes. See if you now just ease off the foot brake and see if it rolls. If sometimes does, if sometimes does, then it's a bit of hot luck on this road because it's not fully hilly, but it's a little bit hilly. No. No luck. I think it rolls a little bit. Rolled, <laughs> This bit of roll. Okay. So now, because now we're now, now it's sort of done that bit. We're now because what I was doing that for is sometimes it does start rolling quite a bit. So you want to have that brake ready to go. Okay. But because it hasn't rolled, we're now going to do our gas and biting point to move it back. Okay. So you're going to set your gas. So you can keep the handbrake down. That's fine. Okay. That's cool. So you're gonna set and then see if you can find that that bite. But remember what we did moment, how sensitive we want to be moving that clutch to keep it really slow. Okay. Ooh. That's it, and clutch down a little bit, that's it, it's like this, it's good, clutch down a bit. And then clutch fully down, what do you think, do you think you can steer yet? I think we can start turning now. Yeah. So we're going to then just, um, and which way are you going to be turning, do you think? I'm going to be turning to the right. Good. And do you think it's going to be a little bit of turning or a lot of turning? Definitely a lot of turning. Mm. <laughs> so it's probably going to be what we call a full lock okay. of steering the wheel all the way until it won't turn anymore. Okay. So we're going to ideally try and do it when we're moving, because if you do it when you're stationary, it can sort of cause wear to the tyres. If you're steering when you're stationary, it's what some people refer to as dry steering. Okay. Um, so we're going to try and do it with moves. So if you now initially bring that clutch a bit to start moving it backwards very slowly, and as soon as it starts moving, then steer the wheel to the right. That's great. That's it. This is really nice control. This is really good. And how would you slow the car down? Can you show me that? Push down on the clutch a little bit. Good, yeah, just want to make sure you've got that understanding of that. Cool. This is really nice. It looks good to see this is quick in your head how this how this works with the pedals. task for you, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have to be perfect, I want to sort of see what your your steering's like, is once the car's straightened, I want to see if you can have a go at straightening the wheel. Okay. Like, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, I want to see what your natural judgment's like. You want to straighten the Go wheel. back a little bit more before we do it with it, or just until it's kind of perfectly Ooh, level with that curve. So go back a touch more maybe actually, so I'm going to be OCD, we're going to actually have it slightly wonky. Um, just 
and then see if you can straighten that wheel. Try and do it while you're moving, ideally. Okay. So you're in reverse gear, because this is a task for you to see if you can do it while you're reversing back. I want to see what, see what your judgment's like. It needs to be perfect. I want to see what, what do you reckon. Good. And if you now, um, we'll go back a tiny bit more. So if you look direct at this rear window, we've got a bit more room. We're going to go back a tiny bit more because we make it easy when we go forwards. Just go back a tiny bit more. That's it. That's great. And that'll be fine just there, and then just brakes to stop. That's it, and then keep your feet still. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's nice of the steering though. Have you worked out to get the wheel straight? Okay, lovely. Cool. <laughs> and um, keep your feet still for the moment. Right. Um, if you do need to relax your feet, let me know, and we can secure the car. But you, do you think you're okay to hold your feet still for a moment? It's okay. Because yeah. something we think about. If you look at the sort of um, the horrible fly tipping in the mirror. Yeah. And if you look at the fly, horrible fly tipping directly at the rear window, anything yeah. you notice different different about the perception of distance? I don't know how it feels, the perception of distance. That definitely looks closer mm -hmm. than yeah. if I was to look at the back. Yeah. Which one do you think is going to give you that, that true judgment of how much space there is? It's probably looking... Uh, Maybe looking, turning around? Yeah, maybe? looking directly, yeah, rather than through a mirror. Okay. Because a mirror, it's like a letterbox, really, that. So, looking at anything, you'd be best look at it directly, wouldn't you? Wouldn't okay. it? Yeah. Um, so, that's when reversing, best place normally looking is, is directly out the rear window, because that will make it a lot easier to judge things, okay. particularly distances from obstructions and yeah. and that sort of thing. That was definitely my one concern, because this mirror is telling me one thing, this one's telling me another one. <laughs> It can. So you kind of something to almost use all of it. Yeah. Because sometimes you might find looking at the direct out of the rear window, you'll miss something that you could have seen in the right mirror, for example. Okay. Or if you looked in the right mirror too much, you might miss something that you could have seen in the left mirror. So it's kind of yeah. You need to be aware of kind of everything when you're reversing because of the perceptions of how everything looks different. Okay. Um. So what we're going to do now is move forwards and turn left to go back down the road we came from. Okay. So. What gear would you move into? Here we go. Cool. And this would be a good chance. When you move forwards here, why do you think you'd need to go really slowly when you do this? Because we're aiming straight at the moment and I need room to turn. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Cool. So this is going to be a good practice right. of that clutch control stuff. Okay. So you go whenever you're happy at safety and whenever you're happy. Am I going to roll anywhere? Yes. Is See? it alright to put the handbrake? Yeah, so use the handbrake for help, so that's no problem. Because it lightly worked out, it does then mean you won't roll, so you can prepare yourself without the car rolling. Okay. So that can be the benefit of using the handbrake. So, is it safe to go? It's, yeah. Cool. So, and then try to look where you want to go. That's it. So clutch up a little bit. That's great. Good. That's nice clutch control there. And keep controlling that clutch so you've got time to sort your steering out. That's nice. That's nice sort of steering. That's, that's nice natural ability. You had to just steer the wheel and know where straight was. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to then pull up on the left just long here. We will signal for this pedestrian. That's it. And you come a little bit closer in. And just cover that brake till you're ready and then steer away. Okay. Steer a little. That's good, you're good here. So clutch needs to go down. down, that's it. And then gently. That's good. And then secure and quite good, so. Cool. And then, yeah, good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Bubby has me nervous every time. What's that? They're coming off yeah. the... It's, 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 almost, it's always in some ways a good thing, yeah. that, because that'll make you, when you come off the pedals, just always come off them cautious, with caution. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a good thing in some ways. You don't, you're don't. you right. You don't want to, for example, jump off and then the car to jump forward, so that yeah. wouldn't be good. Okay. So you do want that kind of slight 
cautiousness when you come off the pedals. Okay. Um, so, yeah, how was that though, turning the car around? It was definitely a struggle. I feel it's like focusing on all the different things at once was... Yeah. It, it wasn't overwhelming, but it was a lot to take in at once and then learn. But then the clutch control, you have to remember just to keep massaging the clutch. Mm and then turning at the same time it was it was dead. it's not what i expected so it's quite a lot of multitasking drive isn't yeah. there but, um i thought you did really well with that though as that as because so far you've actually done really, for a first lesson i think people watching this yeah. will be almost thinking that's not his first lesson oh right really because <laughs> it's actually just really it's just really good control for the clutch that was there and it's nice to see you've got that natural you can kind of naturally kind of know where straight is in the wheel, like you're st feeding the wheel around, steering it around, thinking that's not quite a bit more there it needs to be. Okay. Um, and even when reversing, initially, when and like I said to you, see if you can straighten the wheel here, initially you didn't get it straight, but oh. you figured it out. Okay. You went back a bit, didn't you? You thought that's not straight. Ah, they're straight. Yeah. So you figured, Wait. figured out that it wasn't perfectly straight and then turned some more until it was straight. Okay. So that's what I thought I'd do that, if you could see how, see how well you understood the wheel and that seems, seems like quite a natural ability of judging whether straight is in the wheel and that sort of thing. Okay. 